Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the pump housing volute on your dishwasher. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, you will need to remove the dishwasher from the cabinets. So the first thing we'll need to do is to turn off the power to the dishwasher. So either locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuse, or pull it up far enough forward that you can unplug it. You'll want to remove the lower access panel so that we can access the inlet water supply. You want to turn that off and then disconnect it from the fill valve. And you may also require disconnecting the drain hose to get enough extension on that that you can pull the dishwasher completely out of the cabinets. And lastly, we'll need to remove the mounting screws for the mounting tabs that are located on top of the dishwasher that secure it to the bottom of your countertop. Once we've done that, we can pull the dishwasher out and do the repair. Now with the dishwasher pulled out of the cabinets, our next step will be to remove any items that are on that lower rack. And then we'll take the rack out and set that aside. We'll also need to remove the lower spray arm. And just hold that center mounting nut and turn the spray arm counterclockwise. Lift that off. And we'll also need to remove the upper rack to remove any items that are on it. Release the rack stops from either end. Simply depress the little plastic top on that rack stop and slide it up through the opening. Just set that aside. Do the same with the opposite one. Again, just depress that tab, slide that rack stop up through the opening and set it aside. Then we're gonna pull that upper rack completely out. Again, we'll set that aside. Push the rails back into the dishwasher opening. Now with both racks removed and our lower spray arm, our next job will be to remove this manifold that goes up the back of the tub and across the top where the upper spray arm is attached to. That manifold is held to the tub with a metal clip in the middle at the back and another one at the end on the top. Now to release that manifold, we're simply going to spread one of those, one side of that clip while lifting down on that manifold to free it up. We'll do the same in the middle. Just release one side and you should be able to turn that over away from the opposite clip. Now our next step will be to lift up slightly from the bottom and rotate it clockwise as we're facing down on it. Once the three tabs line up with the openings on that base of the pump, we can lift that off and remove that manifold and set it aside. Now once we've turned that manifold around far enough that these tabs line up with the openings, you can simply lift that off that hub and remove that whole manifold from the dishwasher and set it aside. Next, we'll lift off the lower spray arm support bearing. Make sure that the thin nylon washer stays intact and set that aside. Then we'll remove these four screws from the filter and remove that. I should be able to lift that out of that opening. And then we'll set that aside. Now with the accumulator removed from the pump, we have access to this cover that sits over top of the chopper blade and impeller assembly. It's held in place with a single screw off on the left and then a little locking tab here on the right. So we'll remove that screw. It's a number 15 Torx head screw. Now with the screw removed, 
Next, we'll take a flat blade screwdriver and we'll get down into this opening closest to the round portion of that cover. Just push back on that tab a bit, and then you should be able to lift that cover off. We'll set that aside. We'll then lift out the chopper blade assembly. Now to remove that chopper blade assembly, again, we'll take a flat blade screwdriver. We'll go in between the blades and that filter screen. Just pry out on those blades to disengage from the shaft. Then lift that assembly out and we'll set that aside. Now with that removed, we're gonna to go to the bottom of the pump assembly where we can remove the pump motor now next, we're going to go to the bottom of the dishwasher so that we can remove the motor and finish our repair. Now we've laid the dishwasher on its right side. But next, we need to remove the retaining bolt for that motor assembly. And it's located above this shield, up tight to the bottom of the tub. So using a 3 8 socket with an extension, we reach in there and access that bolt and then loosen it. And just pull the shield with the bolt intact completely out of there. Now we can rotate that motor assembly. Just kind of clockwise a little bit. And pull the assembly completely out of the pump body where we can set that down. Now with the pump motor removed from that pump housing, we next disconnect that harness to make this repair a little easier. We need to next remove the impeller assembly from that motor shaft. So what we need to do is to come in from the back side of that motor using a flat blade screwdriver. So we'll position that screwdriver in here. We want to use caution that we don't damage the motor windings. So visually make sure you have that in the proper spot. And we'll go to the front of the motor and we can turn that impeller and unthread it from the shaft. Now we'll remove the volute from the front of the motor and just take note of the position that sits in. Next we'll need to remove the seal First of all, inspect it for any signs of damage to that carbon ring, and if there is, you'll need to replace that impeller seal assembly. So to remove that, we'll need to push it out from the back side. So using a small flat blade screwdriver, come into that area, and then just gently push that out. Again, we'll inspect that to make sure that it's in good shape. And we'll just moisten the edge of that seal. And then we'll press it into place in our new volute. Again, take caution with that carbon face that we don't damage it. And just inspect it from the back side. And we see how far we have to press that in. Once we have it nice and straight, you can push on the seal from the outside. Now if we verify that that seal is still in good shape, we can then position that new volute on our pump body. Inspect the bottom of that seal assembly for any signs of deformation. And then we'll thread that onto the shaft. Once you've started the thread, again, we'll go to the back of the motor using a flat blade screwdriver. We'll just prevent that armature from turning and thread that completely onto that motor shaft. Remove the screwdriver. 
And now we're ready to put the assembly back into the dishwasher. Remove any debris that may be in that opening that's caught in that filter. You can take the opportunity, pull that screen out and clean that. So if you remove that screen to clean it, you need to make sure that we put it back into the proper manner. There's a little T-shaped opening in one portion of it here that will go on the top of that opening. And the sharp edge here will fit in behind that protrusion there. And once we have that seated firmly, we then take our pump assembly. And you'll note that there is a indicator arrow on that volute, and we're gonna line that up with the corresponding arrow on that motor housing. Now when we insert that into the pump body, we wanna make sure that we have this forked opening line up with that tab on the inner portion of that pump. The new volute has a dry gasket on, so you wanna moisten that a bit or make sure that we've moistened the inside of the opening on that pump body so that it will slide in easier. And just water will do fine for that. Again, make sure that we have the balloon lined up with the arrow on that pump motor. And then we're gonna line up this slotted opening with that tab on the inside of the pump. We'll have to press that motor and pump assembly until they're flush. Then you should be able to rotate that motor clockwise until the bolt hole lines up. Now next we'll take the shield and that bolt. We'll line them up with the opening or that hole in the motor mounting bracket. and hold that shield in position while you tighten the bolt. And once we have it secured, remember to reconnect the wire harness to the motor. Press it in until the locking tabs engage. And now we're ready to stand the dishwasher back up and we can reassemble the pump from the inside. Now before we reassemble that chopper blade assembly to the um, impeller shaft. I want to make sure that we clean any debris out of here and use caution because there's often broken glass in that area. Now when reinserting the chopper blade assembly, we first of all want to make sure that the large portion of the diameter is at the top. We also need to make sure that the bottom half of it fits into that recessed groove in the housing. Now, there's also a couple of notches that are closer to the impeller. Those will line up with the cover, so don't try to force the screen portion of that chopper blade assembly into those rear slots. It's just the one at the bottom that we need to concern ourselves with. Now, the easiest way to put that in is to use a pair of needle nose pliers. We'll go between the chopper blade and that screen, what that does is pull the backside of that chopper blade assembly, the drive gear, further or closer to the screen. It'll make installation a lot easier. So line it up. We'll set that down into that slot. Once we have it fully seated, just hold it in place, remove the pliers, and you'll find that it is sitting on top of the impeller drive. To verify, just rotate that a couple of turns, and you'll see that it is engaged in behind. Now next, we'll put that cover on. We've cleaned any debris off of that, and we're installing that cover. Make sure that this tab fits into the opening between that flat surface and the edge of the housing for that chopper blade. And that will ensure that the screw hole lines up on the back. The groove along the inner portion of that will sit right on top of that screen 
can hold that in place. So the cover should be flush against the housing. Tab will engage on the right hand side and the screw hole lines up on the left. So we'll install that short screw on the back. Now we're ready to put the accumulator back on. We just want to make sure that we line up that drain opening with the opening on the bottom of the pump housing. centered up and the screw holes should all line up. Now we'll insert the longer number 20 Torx head screws into those four holes. Make sure they all line up and then we'll tighten them. We'll reinstall the lower spray arm bearing. Again, make sure that that Nylon washer is in place. And now we're ready to put the manifold back on. So we begin by positioning the top of that manifold into the right rear corner. And we'll lift that hub on top of the spray arm bearing. Line up the three tabs, press it down so it's flush. And then just rotate the counterclockwise until it needs to stop. And then we'll re-engage the mounting clips on the tub. We'll begin with the one in the center. Now with it centered up, take note of the tabs on either side of that housing in the center, and those will engage that metal clip. So we're just pressing one side, and then the other. Make sure it's attached on both sides. We'll do the same on the top. Make sure it's pressed firmly towards the back of the tub. Tuck one side in, flex the other side in, make sure it's engaged. And now we can put the spray arm and racks back. All right, so we'll begin by pulling the rails out for that upper rack. And then we'll position both rear wheels into the grooves. Slide it back until the front wheels engage. Now we're ready to reinstall those rack stops. And again, the flexible portion will go on the top. So we're gonna position that flush against the front of that rail, press it down into place, and just verify that that tab sprung back out and is holding it there. Do the same for the opposite side. And we can push that rack back into the tub. Next, we'll put the lower spray arm on. Make sure we pull that bearing up so it's free. Position the spray arm on top of it and hold that nut. Turn the spray arm counterclockwise. So it's tight, make sure it turns freely. We're now ready to put the lower rack back in, line it up on the door, slide it back into place. And we can close the dishwasher up and we're ready to prepare to push back into the cabinets. We're now ready to push the dishwasher back into the cabinets. We we'll want to reconnect our drain hose, reconnect our inlet fill hose and turn the water supply on. We'll need to reconnect the power to the dishwasher, resecure it to the bottom of our countertop, and your repair is complete.